Namaste. So let's look into the third verse of Sri Shiva Panchakshara Stotram. And this verse, because, remember, the beginning of each verse follows the syllables of the mantra, na ma shi This verse begins with the syllable shi and it's about the syllable shi First is shivaya Shivaya means of course unto the auspicious one Shiva means auspicious pure uh, offering benediction and of course because he's the supreme pure he's also the supreme purifier and any association with him, even just hearing about him, is extremely auspicious and purifying. Next is Gauri. Gauri refers to Parvati, Shiva's consort. I don't like to call her his wife, because really, they are married. They are one and the same being. Just Shiva is the expression of Nirguna Brahman, whereas she is the Saguna Brahman with qualities. And she has all qualities. So, really, she's the only one who's qualified to be Shiva's mate. And they are inseparable, simply two sides of the same being. Next, Badanamja. Badana Abja means like a blooming lotus. Uh, the blooming lotus is the symbol of spiritual growth and enlightenment. And abja means face. So her face, Gauri's face, is like blooming lotus. Very beautiful and highly spiritual. And then Brinda a bunch, a group. It can mean a forest, but here it means like a cluster, a cluster of blooming lotus flowers. Vrinda huh? Suryaya, like the rising sun, glowing like the rising sun. So this whole first line, Shivaya Gauri Vadanap Javrinda Suraya, can mean when Gauri sees Shiva glowing like the morning sun, her face blooms like a cluster of lotus flowers. That's the meaning here. And so uh, we can imagine their relationship is extremely sweet and wonderful. And this is something we can inquire into and read in the scriptures all kinds of pastimes in Shiva Purana about Shiva and Gauri together. Next, Dakshina Dvar. Dakshina Dvar Daksha. Well, Daksha means expert. And Dakshina also means a sacrifice or an offering. So Shiva destroyed the sacrifice of Daksha. Daksha, the Prajapati, the son of Brahma, who also inherited from his father a bad attitude towards Shiva, or Rudra, actually, uh, thinking that Rudra is uh, Brahma's son. So even though his daughter, Sati, uh, married Shiva, he was never really in favor of it. He only accepted it because Brahma advised him to. But deep down, he harbored some resentment. And so when he made a big sacrifice where all the gods were invited, he didn't invite Shiva, Rudra. And so uh, Shiva took this as an offense. And Gauri also came and chastised Daksha for his ignorance and, and bad attitude, and then created a yogic fire and destroyed her body. And to this day, when a wife enters the fire at her husband's death, this is called sati, 
And it was a common practice in India until it was outlawed by the British a couple hundred years ago. But anyway, this is one of the most wonderful pastimes because it shows how those who are pious or those who pretend to be spiritual, but they neglect Lord Shiva, they neglect the worship of Rudra, are destroyed by their own bad attitudes. And Nashakaya means unto the destroyer. <laughs> so he is both the destroyer of Daksha's sacrifice and the destroyer of the whole material creation at the end of the Mahakalpa. So that's Rudra, that's the Rudra aspect of Shiva. And uh, so one should definitely offer him all kinds of worship so he doesn't destroy you. <laughs> Then, <laughs> Sri Nilakantaya means unto him who has a beautiful blue throat. Actually, not his whole throat, but just a line around his throat is blue because he swallowed the poison in the churning of the ocean of milk, the causal ocean. The causal ocean is the home of Vishnu. And it is the reservoir of all material elements and qualities. And this is represented by Lakshmi, who is all wealth. All the wealth in the material universe is under the control of Vishnu. And Vishnu uses it to supply the ingredients for the creation, for Brahma to actually fashion the planets and their inhabitants. So... When this ocean is churned, that means the causes of the creation are created. And all kinds of things came out of that churning, including a virulent poison, enough to actually kill all the living entities in the whole universe. So Shiva, out of his compassion and mercy, drank that poison, but he didn't swallow it. He kept it in his throat. Only Shiva can do things like this. So since that time, he's known as Nila Kanta. Brishadvaj means brusha, bull, and dwaja means a victory flag. When one attains a military victory, he raises a flag to symbolize the victory. So. His victory flag has the image of a bull, Nandi, who is also his vehicle, his mount. And Nandi can go anywhere, anywhere in the three universes of past, present, and future, anywhere in the three worlds of the lower, middle, and upper planetary systems, and anywhere in the higher realms of the universe, the pure creation, and even in the spiritual world. So Nandi is very powerful, just like Shiva. Then finally, the last line, Tasmai Shikaraya Nama Shivaya. Shikaraya, the syllable Shi. Shiva becomes that syllable and enters into it, and it becomes his representative in the mantra, Om Nama Shivaya. And that is our offering of worship, homage, and obeisances to beautiful Lord Shiva. Aung Tatsat, Aung Shakti Aung, Aung Namah Shivaya.